Hi, in this video, uh, I'm going to be talking about how to use the TI-84 calculator to find the zeros of a quadratic function. Um, a zero or a root is really the spot where if I graph a function, like a parabola maybe, which is what we're talking about in my class right now, it's the location where that parabola crosses the x-axis. And we call it a zero because that's where the y-coordinate is, zero. So that's kind of where it gets its name. Um, and really this video is not so much about that, it's more about how to do it. So this is more about how to click the buttons to get the answer that you want. So um, I encourage you at any point in time to pause the, uh, the instruction, or pause the video here and write down the instructions that are on the left. It's six easy steps, really that, that simple. Okay, so I'm gonna do the equation that's at the bottom of that sheet over there. And that is, I want to graph y equals negative 16x squared plus 64x plus 80, and I want to find the zeros of that equation, of that function. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up and I'm going to hit Y equals to get into grapher mode. And I'm going to type in that equation. Negative 16X squared plus 64X plus 80. I wonder how loud those clicks are. Sorry if they're really loud. Okay. And I'm ready to graph it. One of the first things I notice is what, uh, well, I guess I'm really not seeing much of the parabola. And I want you to understand it really doesn't matter. But um, if you don't see the entire shape of the graph that you want to, it probably has to do with your zooming window. So you probably want to go through and like maybe uh, maybe you can go into window. And I could uh, negative 10 to 10. I don't know if that's okay or not. I, maybe I'll go into the second and I'll go into the table and I'll look at some X values. Whoa, look at those Y values there, right? That goes all the way up to 144. That's pretty tall. So maybe I can come over here to my window now and I can say, you know what? I want to go down and I'm going to change my maximum Y value. That means that the maximum height, maybe change it up to like 150 or something. Okay. And now when I graph it, ah, there we go. Now I can see the whole shape of the graph, right? So a simple use of the table helps me kind of hit the right area, the right window for the graph. Now I didn't really need to do that. But um, I wanted to show it to you anyway because it's an important thing to know how to do. See, what we're looking at is where are the two locations right here and right there that it crosses the graph. Those are the two, those are the two zeros that I have in this case. And so the easiest way to find them is just to go into second and into the calculation menu, C-A-L-C, right? Calculation menu. And option number two here says zero. So I scroll down, I hit enter. And it says it wants boundaries here. Okay, so it wants to know where on the graph am I looking for those zeros. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to scroll just to the left of where it crosses the x-axis. I know I'm just to the left of it because that says negative 27. So I'm, I'm down in that negative region, right? I'm going to hit enter. Now it says, okay, what about the right boundary? Where else do I look? And so I'm going to scroll just to the right. And I know I'm in the right now because I'm positive, right? So I picked a negative number for one and a positive number for the other. I know that somewhere between them it had to cross the axis. It had to zero, right? So I hit enter one more time. It always says guess. And so anytime it says guess, I just hit enter one last time. And it tells me the zero is at negative one, zero. So one of the zeros is where x is equal to negative one or the xy coordinate of negative one comma zero in parentheses, right? Now, if I want to go find the zero on the other side, I just have to repeat the process. I'm going to go second, calc. I'm going to go option number two, which is a zero. Notice I can also hit this two button here. I'm going to scroll all the way over here. Lots of click into the right. Okay, and I'm going to stay just to the left of the, of the spot where it crosses, right? So right here would be perfect. Hit enter. I'm going to go just to the right of, it, of the cursor. I know I'm just to the right of it because I'm down at a negative Y coordinate now. I'm going to hit enter. So somewhere between there and these two arrows that are right up here, it crosses the axis. If I want to know where that is, it says guess. I just hit enter one more time. The other one was at five. So the two zeros were at negative one zero and five comma zero in X, Y coordinates. Pretty slick. Hopefully that helps you out. Um, you can do that for any equation. It doesn't matter how complicated it gets. It doesn't matter if it's x cubed, x to the fourth. It doesn't matter if it's uh, a square root, a logarithm, all that stuff. This is a pretty nice feature of the TI-84 graphing calculator.